Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, what we're going to talk about on tonight's episode is, to me, something that's profound, that is amazing. I honestly believe that gun buybacks may have just put another nail in the gun control theory coffin. Now, keep in mind, the entire premise and understanding of gun control is that if you just simply get rid of the guns, there will be no more crime, there will be no more violence. All the woes of the world will go away. Well, the gun buyback programs that are so incredibly popular in blue states, in blue cities, are proving to be the exact opposite outcome of the desired effect. It is not actually lowering crime. It is actually not lowering any statistic. It is actually only increasing in the areas where it's actually shown multiple times over and over again. Everything is going to be linked in the description box below. This is a pretty good article if you want to read it, but this is specifically coming out of Philadelphia. Now, like I said... Let me know what you guys think in the comments field below, because this stuff right here, this is how you win for our Second Amendment, bit by bit, statistic by statistic, because everything that they try fails because it conflicts with the Second Amendment and it's not based. In fact, it's based in emotion and control. But let's get going. Though well-intentioned, gun buyback programs miss the mark. Buybacks don't get guns out of the hands of criminals, so why do we keep spending taxpayer dollars on them? That is an excellent question. Now, the setup here is going to be basically going towards the buybacks. Listen to the statistical results. This is crucial. During Prohibition, newsreels shown at movie theaters often included footage of police or federal authorities smashing bottles of wine, beer, and other booze confiscated from a bootlegger or an illegally run speakeasy. Fifty years later, during the War on Drugs, TV newscasts frequently included video coverage of law enforcement officers similarly confiscating large stashes of marijuana, cocaine, and other illegal drugs to get them off the streets. That's actually very astute. That's absolutely what happened. But how effective were those tactics? Well, anyone who wanted a drink could get one during Prohibition. No wonder the law was eventually rescinded. As for the war on drugs, it didn't stop the life-sapping of impact that crack, meth, heroin, and fentanyl have had since on this country. Absolutely correct. Because people are going to people, criminal are going to criminal. But listen to the real results. Again, coming out of Philadelphia. Philadelphia collected 558 handguns and 100 long guns during 16 buybacks last year. That minuscule amount is unlikely to have any impact on the city's record pace of shootings halfway through the year. 1,100 people had been shot. That's up 8% from 2021's record numbers. So you're going from 2020, excuse me, 2021 into 2022 at an 8% increase. All the while, you've had 16 different gun buybacks for a total of 558 handguns and 100 long guns. Now, according to gun control theory, you would see a decrease in crime, but you saw an increase. Those two things cannot exist in the same ecosystem, if you will. But let's keep going. There's even more, and this gets spicy towards the end. Buybacks don't get guns out of the hands of criminals. Odd. As Inquirer staff writers Ryan W. Briggs and Eli Rushing recently reported, not one of the more than 1,000 guns turned in over the last three years at Philadelphia's buybacks has been linked to a crime. Folks who collected $50 to $200 gift cards for every gun they turned in may be richer, but their neighborhoods may not be safer. So out of a 1,000 guns, not a single one was used in the commission of a crime. How's it going to prevent crime if their guns that aren't being used in crime are still out there? Because the people who are turning them in are not the criminals. Let's keep going. A study released last year by the National Bureau of Economic Research concluded that 339 buybacks in 277 cities and 110 counties between 1991 and 2015 had no significant impact on crime. No city or county had more than a 1.3% decline in crime in the 12 months after their buybacks. That is a nationwide with over 339 buybacks what was it, 277 cities and 110 counties, and the biggest decline was 1.3%. Those numbers alone are staggering, and they prove the point that buybacks, gun control, stepping outside of buybacks, the gun control theory does not hold water. The idea here that all these guns were removed from the system, as gun control theory would say, would be the solution only proved in the other direction. They had no effect, and in some cases, even up. 
check this out. I got another one for you. In fact, the study said a 7.7% increase in crimes involved a gun occurred in those cities and counties in the immediate two months after the buyback. The researchers fa uh, further found that, quote, no evidence that firearm-related suicides and homicides declined in the years following the buyback. So not only did they not have the decline, it was missing. The guaranteed promise of infringing upon people's rights is missing. The payoff, not there. But it also increased by 7.7% in the two months afterwards because there were less firearms available to defend people from criminals because the criminals maintained possession of their firearms. Let's keep going. This stacks really nicely on top of the red flag law video we did earlier today. Some community activists want buybacks to continue. This part boggles my mind. This absolutely goes to something on the left side of the aisle with most of their concepts, whether it be economics, whether it be gun control, no matter what it is. If their idea didn't work, you just didn't go far enough. Socialism, yeah, yeah, it, it's a great idea. They just didn't do it right those other times. Gun control, we got rid of all these guns, but crime went up. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't pay enough for them, so you didn't get enough gun crime. What? Let's continue. Bilal Quayam, a founder of the Father's Day Rally Committee, believes buybacks reduce murders even if there is no current data to support that claim. It doesn't matter what the facts say. I have these feelings, therefore they are clearly justified because feelings over facts all day, every day. We're going to continue down this path even though there is zero result that we've guaranteed and promised in exchange for the infringement of the Second Amendment. Jonathan Wilson, clinical director of the Fathership Foundation, says more of the lethal weapons used by criminals will be retrieved if buybacks paid the same $800 to $1,000 that a seller can make in the illegal market. So the solution from the second person is just pay them more out of taxpayer funding. Just get them more and more money. Match the black market pricing. What? In my personal opinion, the more articles that we see like this, the more examples that we see of gun control or just simple buybacks, they're proving that the gun control theory does not work. The problem is in here. The problem is not right here. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments field below, and I'll see you tomorrow on The Bold Ones. I'm Braden. See you later.